Welcome back. In the last session, you began establishing systems for measuring customer needs. Each measurement system requires two things, a unit of measure and a means for performing the measurement, a sensor. By now, you have selected units of measure. In this session, you will select sensors. A sensor is a specialized detecting device. It recognizes the presence and intensity of some phenomenon. It then converts this sense knowledge into usable information. Technological instruments are well-known sensors. Clocks to measure time in minutes. Thermometers to measure temperature in degrees. Rulers to measure distances in millimeters. Familiar industrial sensors include cash register receipts, clock cards, requisitions for materials, some sensors are designed to amplify human senses. A magnifying glass is an aid to visibility. Other sensors can measure phenomena which human senses are unable to detect. Magnetism, atomic radiation. In any case, the detected stimuli must be converted into things the human senses can detect. Visual signals, scale measurements, beeps. The sensor may also consist of a human being who is plugged in to do what, as yet, no technological instrument is able to do. The police patrol is an example of human beings used as sensory devices. So is a design review team. The industrial sensor is not necessarily located within the company. The sensors which detect changes in cost of living, prices of materials, or in business activity may be maintained by a trade association, a business magazine, or a government bureau. Corporate planners study such information to detect business trends. Sensors abound in company operations. Many of these sensors provide information to planners, and this information is widely used in the quality planning process. During quality planning, we require information to satisfy two principal needs. The need for early warning of problems ahead, and the need to evaluate process capability, the ability of the quality plan to meet goals under operating conditions. To make sound decisions while planning for quality depends in part on the credibility of the sensors. Is the information they give reliable? This credibility depends largely on the precision and accuracy of the sensor. Let's examine the meaning of those two terms, precision and accuracy, through the use of an analogy. In archery, Accuracy has to do with how close the average of shots is to the bullseye. Precision has to do with how close the shots are to each other. Here are the results of my efforts earlier today. These shots are accurate. Although the arrows are scattered, the average is close to the bullseye. These shots are more precise. The arrows are tightly clustered, but they're not as accurate as the previous example because the average distance of the arrows to the bullseye is greater. Here, I finally caught on. These shots are both accurate and precise. The distinction between accuracy and precision applies to sensors. A precise sensor is one which gives repeatable results. Repeated measurements of the same quantity are close to one another. An accurate sensor is one which tells the truth. The average of the measurements is close to the true value. The ideal sensor is both accurate and precise to the degree required by the application. Most technological sensors are very precise. Human sensors, such as inspectors and auditors, 
are less precise. The more critical the product features which are to be evaluated, the greater is the need to evaluate the precision of the sensor. This is a common egg timer. It is precise enough for cooking an egg. However, if our job is to time contestants in an Olympic track event where hundreds of a second can separate the gold medalist from the silver, the precision of this sensor is inadequate. The accuracy of technological sensors is usually easy to adjust. A simple example is a clock or watch. The owner can listen to the time signals over the telephone. Good afternoon. At the tone, the time will be 3.36. And 50 seconds. The owner then makes a correction, a change which offsets the error. In industrial dialect, the owner has recalibrated the instrument. In contrast, the precision of a sensor is not easy to adjust. The upper limit of precision is inherent in the basic design of the sensor. To improve precision beyond this upper limit requires a redesign. It may happen that the sensor is operating at a level of precision below that of its inherent ability. This may be due to misuse, dirt, or inadequate maintenance. In that event, removal of those causes can allow the sensor to regain its inherent precision. Sensors can deteriorate during use. They can also deteriorate during non-use. To guard against the resulting errors, it is necessary to establish a plan for maintaining the sensors. Such a plan usually consists of two parts. One part is a schedule for maintenance of sensors. The schedule sets out how often the sensor is to be checked. The second part of the maintenance plan is a checklist or countdown of action to be taken during the check. Human sensing also deteriorates during use. Fatigue and monotony set in. In critical sensing, such as military sentry duty, it is common to limit the length of the watch in order to minimize deterioration. In industry, study of the efficiency of visual inspection showed, for example, that human inspectors who were able to find 70% of the visible printed circuit board solder defects in the morning often found fewer than 40% in the afternoon. Human sensing also deteriorates with non-use. In the absence of practice, humans forget. Periodic refresher training is aimed at reducing the effects of forgetting. Some airlines require that pilots receive periodic refresher training in detecting emergency conditions and dealing with them. In addition to deterioration of human sensing, we must contend with human errors arising from a variety of other causes, inadvertence, lack of technique, conscious errors. Remedies for such errors are well known. Each is designed to be responsive to a particular species of human error. Human errors and their remedies are summarized in your action guide. Quality planning is often done by persons who will not have the responsibility to execute the plan. There are advantages to separating planning from execution, but there are also risks. A major risk has been that the plans, while meeting the needs of external customers, do not meet the needs of internal customers. In the dialect of managing for quality, the plans lack process capability. To make matters worse, the calendar time consumed by the various phases of the planning cycle may be considerable. In such cases, the failure to discover the lack of process capability until operations begin creates costly crises for the operating forces. To avoid such crises requires special early warning sensors. In the case of an individual planner, a built-in early warning system can be established by enabling the planner to learn the operating conditions at first hand. Such learning may come from training courses, from temporary assignments in operations, or from discussions with operating supervisors and workers. 
An alternative early warning sensor is a team of managers or specialists drawn from those operating areas which will be heavily impacted by the plan. This design review team studies the plan and tells the planner in effect, if you plan it this way, the future problems will be as follows. The responsibility for planning remains with the planner. However, the findings of the sensor, the design review team, are influential. Another form of early warning is the joint planning team. This approach has much in common with design review, but there's a major difference. Whereas the design review team critiques someone else's plan, the joint planning team shares responsibility for creating and approving the plan. Note that in the past, the term design review has usually been associated with review of designs of physical goods. However, the concept is applicable to all kinds of design, system design, organization design, process design. The technological sensors used for quality planning are generally well developed and well understood. In contrast, the managerial sensors used for quality planning at the supervisory and managerial levels are still in the early stages of evolution. Supervisors and middle managers need measures to help them establish departmental quality goals and to evaluate departmental performance against those goals. Sensors for such purposes consist mostly of departmental summaries of product and process performance plus personal observation by the departmental head. Upper managers need measures of such broad matters as quality compared to that of competitors, cost of poor quality relative to sales, time required to launch new products. Sensors to evaluate such features are correspondingly broad. Data systems which collect and summarize information into indexes, ratios, and the like. Reports from committees, project teams, research teams. Audits conducted by independent observers. Personal observation by upper managers. Of course, managers don't use the word sensors. They use the word reports. Selecting a sensor permits a further update of the product design spreadsheet. An additional column is headed sensors and filled in. The sensor for measuring output of the automobile heating system is an elaborate test cell, a wind tunnel arrangement where the designers can simulate the conditions of startup on a cold winter day. The heating system is instrumented to measure output temperature and airflow in accordance with a test procedure. The sensor for quietness is subjective, a technician with sensitive ears. For system leaks, the sensor is the consumer who will discover that engine coolant has, or has not, leaked on the garage floor. That may sound bad, but it isn't. Within the company, leaks will be prevented by process control for the component most often responsible for leaks. A sensor is a specialized detecting device which converts sense knowledge into useful information. A precise sensor is one which gives repeatable results, measurements of the same quantity that are close to one another. An accurate sensor is one which tells the truth. The average of the measurements is close to the true value. Various reporting systems serve as managerial sensors. Human beings as sensors are subject to multiple types of error, but remedies are available for each. Sensing for early warning can be done by exposing planners directly to the activities which will be impacted by their plan, by creating design review teams, or by joint teams of planners and operating personnel. Up to now, you've taken several steps on the quality planning journey, identifying customers and their needs, translating those needs into your language, and providing units of measure and sensors. The next step is to develop product with features which are responsive to customer needs. That is the subject of the next session. I'll see you then.